Which if you've got the recorded version, right? You really gotta cock those off. Yeah. Actually, I mean, it's I've got the program. I can do it. Good morning. I just want to see if anybody's joined us. This is Scott, and we are going to go through this presentation about um, negotiating multiple offers in just a couple minutes. If you're in, please let me know. Yeah, it didn't look like anybody had registered. It said there was still 100 seats available. I'd rather do one with that other product. Oh, okay. It, it'll do a lot better with that. Gotcha. I mean, we could. Um, we'll give it a couple of minutes and see if anybody pops in. Hello, if anyone has joined us today um, in the webinar about handling multiple offers, if you could please just let me know you're with us. We'd love to get started pretty quickly. Thank you. This is where it gets kind of, kind of weird and also infant. Oh. So if I do that, oh, but then I pop over, they can see this. Oh, okay. Hello, is anyone with us today for the webinar? Well, I'm happy meaning to do this. Could I rather finish it? Because I can I can probably finish it in an hour or so and then I do a video on it. <coughs> Good morning, Elise. Can you hear me? Great. At this time, I think you're the only one on with us, but we'll be happy to, to go through it with you. Is there anybody in the office with you? We're just waiting for a few minutes to see if anyone else joins us before we start. 
Uh, Miss Tina Newby, welcome. So we're going to wait another 60 seconds and then we'll begin. I have Elise and Tina. Anyone else joined us today? So Elise, are you still with us? Great. And Tina, are you still with us? Great. You guys see the screen? They, they won't see this. Oh, because it still says you're sharing your screen. Okay. I'm going to um, tab over to the presentation slides and tab back. I just want to... We're the only two that have multiple offers. <laughs> Funny, Tina. Okay, so I'm going to tab over and show the slides, and then I'm going to tab back because I want to ask everyone if they can actually see... Um, the slides, um, so the slideshow itself. And I need to know, can you see this um, slide handling multiple offers, steps, and tips? Either one of you could see that. Let me try again. I think you have to do this. All right, let's try again. Um, okay, I'm sl showing the first slide. I'm going to ask again now. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead. And we're going to start. So um, first thing I want to tell you, it's myself, Scott, and I got Greg Blackall with me. So we're actually um, doing this together. And we were kind of uh, put on the spot at the last minute to do this. So this was originally supposed to be hosted by Sharice Matthews. Um, and um, she took the week off. So we're elected to do that. Um, I'm not quite sure how Sharice was going to present because she had no slideshow to um, go by. And so her style of presenting is a lot different than mine and possibly Greg's. So I got up only about an hour ago and started throwing slides together um, so we can kind of follow a format. And what's important is I'm going to jump over to the slideshow and we're going to talk. Greg and I are going to kind of do this together and we will pop back because I have to, to pop back to this screen to see if anyone has questions. And really, this is important that you're getting the education out of this. So we want to make sure that you do ask questions that are important to you. And we're going to, although I think the original title said uh, that we're going to talk about it on the side of the seller, if you are representing the seller and uh, uh, multiple offers occur, you know, how to handle that properly and some tips to understand, you know, how to gauge what truly is the best offer for the seller um, in respect to everything. And then we're going to roll forward and we're going to talk a little bit of tips and strategies if you were also um, representing a buyer and how to put the position your buyers offer, um, at least give it a better opportunity if it's competing with other offers. So um, I want to introduce Greg. Good morning, everybody. I'm glad you're here. So um, Greg made some slides. I made some slides. I'm going to use my slide. So we're just going to talk. So let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Whoops. 
here. And here's a slide. So okay. I'm going to begin. Um, let's, so, the, you know, the eff essence of this is, you know, really how do you handle multiple offer situations? Um, we're going to talk three things here. First and foremost, we're going to review the, um, the company policy for handling multiple offers when you're representing the seller. It's important that you understand what our expectations of our agents are when there are multiple offer situations. And then tips and strategies for leveraging the best terms for the seller in a multiple offer situation. And then third, tips and strategies for winning over competing offers when you're representing the buyer in a multiple offer situation. So let's, let's go ahead and begin. What is the broker's policy for handling multiple offers when representing a seller or the seller? Um, basically, I, I want to point you to where you find this kind of information out. It's in the new back office. And simply, you know, for things that you have questions about, you always can go to the new back office and go to the Ask Luxy feature. And then for this particular case, you would just use the words, the keywords, multiple offers. When you do get the results of that, it will take you to a page that basically shows what our policy is. And I'm going to read that. It is inevitable that uh, simultaneous multiple offers will be received for the same property. Um, obviously, the market conditions will dictate, you know, what, what happens with that. And we, we still have a tiny bit of multiple offers. Six months ago, there were, it, was a, it was a bigger situation than it is today but this still can occur. In the event, all offers tendered, oral or written, will be immediately shared with the seller. So remind yourself that the Florida law or realtor ethics um, states that we're bound to share all offers with the, the seller unless otherwise instructed in writing. So if they instructed you in writing um, on the listing agreement to maybe only share offers that is at least a certain amount or something that's that's a written agreement, but um, our ethics require us to share all offers with the seller. Salesperson involved shall not partake in any unfair advantage of the situation by informing their prospective buyer the amount of other prospective buyer's offers, as this is an ethics violation. It is also inappropriate to make any price suggestions whatsoever regarding a counteroffer. The company requests that the salesperson keep a log on all stages or of occurrences leading up to the receipt of multiple offers and the seller's decision on the purchase agreement accepted. The company recommends that in situations of multiple offers, if the salesperson recommends to the seller to notify all buyers of multiple offers and have been have, that have been received and request that each submit their highest and best offer by a given date and time of which all offers will be considered and that the seller has the right to decide which offer will be accepted or further negotiated. Okay, so, um, you know, think about in, in, when you're, if you're representing a buyer, you would certainly want to know multiple offers are on the table. Um, and that's possibly a you know, when you, you're prepared to make an offer, and I'm speaking on the buyer side, and you should be questioning the listing agent, is there other offers on the table? And in the same, if you're receiving multiple offers, you should appropriately in, inform each of the um, buyer's agents that all multiple offers have came in so that they understand that, um, it's important that they do. Then um, we want to see that you, you know, make sure it's a level paying field. You do not divulge information about offers to other prospective buyers or their representing agents. Um, and that you give a timeline and it should be done. My, my high recommendation is that this is done in an email. So you broadcast an email out to all of the um, the agents that have presented offers with their buyers, informing them this and giving them a final time of which they can resubmit their final and best offer. 
and then those offers will be what you will review with the seller um, and make decisions on. <clears throat> so one thing I just want to clarify, the company policy is that even oral offers get presented to the seller? Oral offers, we it, the law of uh, the rule is that we have to present all offers. Okay. Okay. However, oral offers don't have much value. Right. Okay. So and you so, you you have to present it, but until um, it's received in writing. Well, you, you know the problem is 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 the seller going to take any regard for an oral offer? No. Right. Um, and this has nothing to do with multiple offers. You want to best position your, you know, if you're representing a buyer to op actually get a, you know, an opportunity to buy property, you should always take the time and make offers in writing. You may have a buyer, you know, dictate, oh, just give them a call and tell them I'll give them this amount of money. Right. Well, you know what? That's great and all, but there's a, oh.